Hi there, my name's Jane Anderson and this is the Jane Anderson Brand You Show. It's the podcast for experts who want to have greater impact, influence and income for their businesses and careers. As experts, we know that people buy from people and work with people who they know, who they like and who they trust. So I'm so glad you're here because it's that time again now to really amplify how you show up in the world. Okay, so welcome to the Jane Anderson Brand You Show. I am so excited to be able to introduce you to our guest today because when I think about this person, I remember the very first time I heard about this person and I found his blogs fascinating. It was when I very first, I left my my job to step out into this crazy world of (laughs) having your own business and I remember learning from this person that he had such... um, insight into I was I was so lost with what to do with my how to set the layout of my website I had all these um, you know people had all these different ideas and I remember reading the the advice that this person had put together on just simple things like where do I put this banner or and I also learned from this person on I, I learned how to write my first blog from this person and um, and so I'm so excited to share and uh, and to do the interview today with our wonderful friend and thought leader Gian Pereira. So Gian today uh, to interview him today and where he's from. So he's a futurist and he's an expert in helping leaders understand how the internet has changed their world. He's been using the internet since 1987. I was 10 years old then, I think. <laughs> you make me feel old, Jane. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the incredible experience. Um, but long before many of it knew it existed, uh, and that was me for sure. Um, for the last 15 years, he's been a speaker, trainer, webinar presenter, and men in South Africa, the United Kingdom, Singapore, and Canada. He is the author of Fast, Flat, and Free, How the Internet Has Changed Your Business, out of office, using the internet for greater freedom in your work life, webinar smarts, and seven other books. And I can certainly say a number of those are on my bookshelf at home. Uh, As an educator, Gian has been at the leading edge of presentation technology and online learning. So he writes and presents for Citrix Global, who are a leading provider of online collaboration technology. So you might have heard of those like GoToWebinar and GoToMeeting. Um, he was one of a handful of invited guest contributors, along with Seth Godin and Nancy Dwight, to Gail Reynolds' book, uh, Presentation Zen. He's one of a handful of ambassadors for Thought Leaders Global. He hosts the eGurus community, an online resource centre for speakers, trainers, consultants and thought leaders. And he's a gold level author for the International Institute of Managers and Directors. Would you believe in 2012, Forbes magazine rated him the number five social media influencer in the world in his area of expertise. His formal background is in science and technology with a Bachelor of Science degree from the University of Western Australia. But he's also been interested in people and the way they communicate and how to leverage technology to deliver messages, extend reach and live happier lives. He lives in the world's most livable city, Perth, Australia. I don't know. Brisbane's a pretty close, close one, Gia. Um, <laughs> he enjoys an enviable lifestyle with his own home, his own business, and his own teeth. <laughs> Even better. Thank you so much for coming along today, Gia. I'm so happy you were able to make it for us. Oh, my pleasure, Jane. I'm really looking forward to this conversation. So, Gian, you've been doing, you know, your experience is phenomenal. As I said, you know, I remember that I've learned so much from you just from your books and your blogs and, and things right from a time when I was scared to death <laughs> of, of starting my own business. I don't think I slept for the first week. But um, I guess I, just for those who are listening, tell us a bit about the type of, of work that you do, type of business you have and, and the type of people you help. Sure, Jane. And and this has changed because I've been doing it. I think this is year 18 now. And when I first started, it was a web design business. It was purely a web design business. Uh, mm-hmm. I was working for a software company. And I was working for, a, uh, I was on secondment in the UK and I was working for this company uh, as one of the team leaders in the design of the software that we were, that we were creating. And mm-hmm. our part of the project was coming to an end. 
And it was almost at the time where I was thinking, okay, well, it's time for me to go back to Australia now. But they wanted to keep me there, but I didn't really have much, much work. So I said to my boss, look, I've just got nothing to do. Um, but he said, look, look, we really need you there. And you have to work 36 and three quarter hours a week because that's part of your contract. He said, why don't you just surf the web? And I said, what's that? And uh, he showed me uh, that not everyone had access to the web at that time. And this was the very, very early days of the web. There's no Google or Facebook or anything like that. There was Yahoo. It wasn't even called Yahoo at the time. And uh, um, I just looked at that and I was fascinated by it. And then I came back to my job, um, worked for a couple of years, and then decided to launch a web design business. And that was in the early days. And it was pretty easy oh. to get business at that time. Um, and I remember that business was supposed to be a global web design business as it started, uh, yeah. but starting off with me just working from my spare bedroom at home. And <laughs> uh, and as it turned out, most of my clients weren't in Perth, which is where I'm from. Um, the, most of them were in the eastern, eastern states. And uh, I discovered that they, they didn't really care whether I had an office somewhere in the St. George's Terrace, the main street of Perth, or in Pitt Street, or in Burke Street, or whether I was just working. But more yeah. than that now, I do, as you said, speaking mentoring, presenting webinars and writing. And uh, that's really developed over the last uh, 10 years or so. Wow, that's just such an incredible journey from from starting a web design business. And you, you must have been like the first web design business around, were you? It was certainly one of the first in Australia, Jane. And at that time, it was, I think I was pretty lucky when I started my business because it was pretty easy to get business. It was easy enough to find people who said, look, we really want a website. We've heard from somebody else who got you to develop their website. Can you do the same for us? And now, of course, it's a lot more competitive in that whole web development space. But at that time, it was easy enough to find people who wanted what I had to offer, not just those who needed it. So, yeah, it was it was a little bit, I was a little bit of a pioneer. But at the same time, I can also say that it was at the time a reasonably easy way to get to get new business. Wow. So, and that's, you know, all those years of experience. And you had that business called something else, Gihan, that wasn't called GihanPereira.com? That that's, was... that's right. That's right. Mm-hmm. Because I remember the, the three months before I started my business, I had to give three months notice from my job. And in mm-hmm. that three months, I read pretty much every book that I could find about business. And not, not all of them were very helpful because, as you know, I mean, they're great books. But as you know, there's nothing like actually being in there doing the work and realizing what business is really about. Um, But one of the books I read is Michael Gerber's E-Myth. And I loved the book. I loved the idea of creating a business that was separate from you and where you could start in it, but create the systems and processes so that you could gradually step out of it. And so that was my plan. I started what was called First Step Communications and the, the business still exists. And um, you know, all my invoices still go out with First Step. The, the company name still registered as First Step. And that's all I had. I had that as a business. And the idea was that although I would be the person who was doing you know, 80 to 90, 100% of the work when we started in the business, the intent was always that I would be able to create a business that I could sell. But I, I realized pretty soon, Jane, that what I was really running was more of a practice than a business. And, uh, you know, it could have gone both ways. Uh, there's certainly web design businesses that completely run as businesses and the owners are completely anonymous. And even if they were the founders, they're no longer the, the, the face the face and name of the business. But I realized that what I love to do was, was to teach. Mm. And uh, so when I started running training courses, people booked me. Even when I started you know, developing websites, people really bought from me. They didn't really buy from First Step. Yes. And so at what point did you realize that uh, you were, so you were educating people and they wanted to work with you. Was there a point where you realized, yes, they want to deal with me (laughs) and that I need to somehow build com? Yeah. And initially, Jane, I resisted it. Mm. I really did. I really, when people said, oh, you can buy from Gihan, um, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't correct them and say, oh, no, you're buying from First Step. But in a way, I was really trying to remain anonymous or really push the First Step name forward. I I never hid behind it, but I always tried to push that name forward. And then just realize that people really do buy uh, and they always did. They bought from me. So I decided that I started by getting GihanPereira.com and then yes. just pointing it to First Step. So I still had the same website and uh, I still had exactly the same business, 
but I started telling people, oh, you know, my, my web address is gihanperot.com. And yes. you know what? The world didn't fall apart. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, it just happened that I, there was, at one point I got a marketing guru because I had a lot of professional speakers as clients at the time and I kind of shied away from that I thought oh you know guru I don't really know about that and I'm really trying to push the business and then I asked a few of my best, better clients mm. and they go well, well duh that's how we refer to you you know in words like that and right. I realized that yep this is me and I've got expertise and first step is like it's kind of switched my whole thinking Jane so rather than first step as being the umbrella business was me as the owner and having a side business sometime in the future it just I flipped around and thought okay well Gihan Pereira is the is a primary brand and first step is just one of the things that he does and it just it opened up a lot of possibilities for me because it meant that when I when I did something else that was different from web design, I didn't have that conflict of, oh, you know, how does this fit into first step? It was very simple to go, okay, well, that's still part of what I do. I help yeah. people people leverage their potential. And web design was, is one way of doing that. Understanding the future is another way of doing that. Presenting webinars is another way of doing that. Creating on, uh, teaching people how to create online programs is another way of doing that. And it just made things so much simpler for me. Yeah, that's interesting because, you know, I had the same experience. So I started off, I still have my business inside out training and coaching mm. and that was how I started with janeanderson.com. Similar thing is that I felt there were things that people were coming to me for expertise. I don't know if you have this experience but based on the offering that was sitting within that business was, uh, you know, I could talk to that. I go, yeah, yeah, I know some stuff on that and I can apply what I've got. But it looks a bit weird in the inside out business. But under your name.com, it gave you the flexibility or still does, gives you the flexibility to um, be agile enough to address whatever that issue is under the uh, Gihan Pereira lens, I suppose. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. And I remember in the, in the first couple of years when I was still... Mm -hmm like 100% focused on on web design. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I built a website for a primary school here in Perth and then the principal said, oh, you know what, we've heard of this thing called the internet and we really want you to teach parents, the parents and the staff, how to search, how to find information on the internet. And this was probably 1998, Jane, and this was this was before yeah. Google and there were things like Alta Vista and yeah. Yahoo and Lycos <laughs> and those sort of things. And... <laughs> I said, okay, yeah, that's fine. And uh, I started doing that. And then he mentioned my name to another school, another principal at another school. So they booked me. And I started thinking, okay, I need to put something on my website about this sort of training, like how that's to find stuff right. on the internet. But it didn't really fit anywhere mm. under First Step because First Step was web design. And right. then I kind of, so I did create a separate web page for it, but it didn't really fit anywhere under the, the whole umbrella of First Step. And I thought, okay, this is not quite right. There must be something bigger than this yeah. uh, or something broader than this. And that kind of, I think that started my thinking towards going, okay, well, you know, what's the common theme here? It's yeah. not web design. It's not training. It's Gihan Pereira. And that's <laughs> what I had to start branding myself as. And you said that it felt a bit um, awkward at first because did you feel like it was, as you said, it wasn't necessarily that you were hiding but it not being the centre of attention and my name being up in a spotlight, was that an uncomfortable step for you back then? For me, not so much, Jane. Okay. So I didn't okay. mind putting myself forward. Uh -huh. what, I was, uh, what I felt uncomfortable about was feeling that I would never be able to step back from it. <laughs> right. Right. So I felt like, yeah. yeah, like I felt if I, if I create first step yeah. and that grows, then I can step yeah. out of first step and I'll have smart people working in first step and they can continue around the company. Whereas mm -hmm. if I create Kihan Pereira as the primary brand, then I always have to be there, always have to be working in it. And yeah. he said, look, it is absolutely possible to create a practice that's just based on you, one or two personal assistants. You can earn as much as you want per year in income. And then you then you invest that money in other areas which are going to create wealth for you rather than the business is creating wealth. So as soon as I made that that switch to thinking, okay, I'm creating a practice, not a business, everything else became easier. So I wasn't really worried about putting my name forward. And that helped me get over my concern about being able to step back from it sometime in the future. Mm. And 
just for the record, so um, uh, Gian and I, uh, Gian is one of the ambassadors of the Thought Leaders program that has been uh, created by Matt Church and now there's Thought Leaders Business School. Um, so I've had Simon Waller on the program who is, who's been part of Thought Leaders as well. So I'm, I'll be interviewing some other Thought Leaders. But um, Gian, you've, you've been there from very early days as part of the Thought Leaders um, um, alumni, I suppose, and the way that you've been able to help speakers and those other people have brand them um, uh, to leverage themselves, particularly through their, their internet um, programs, whether it be websites and online courses and things like that. Yeah, that's right. Right from the very first days that uh, I was there at the very first program that Matt ran Where for Thought really? Leaders. Yeah, yeah. It was, called the, it was called the Cicero Project at that time. Was it? And, uh, and I flew over there for a one-day workshop that he was running in Sydney. And, wow. uh, and I'd known Matt for a while before that because he was one of my very first website clients. And wow. I just loved what he was doing. And we used to always catch up whenever I was in Sydney initially to talk about his website but they always turn into bigger conversations than that and mm. uh, you know just love his thinking always enjoy his company and do even to this day and i really love this idea of being a thought leader and building up this expertise and then you can put it out in the world in different ways and at that time i only had one way which was well two i guess so but most of it was through the website and the website design and the other part of it which was just building up at that time was training so I was doing more training and coaching. Now I do more speaking and mentoring. But at mm. the time, I used to run training courses yes. and um, even training course on web design. Yeah, right. And so, Gihan, you know, you, over those, as you said, 18 years and you've seen a lot in that time and I no doubt um, found better ways of doing things or made mistakes along the way as well. If you had your time again, is there anything, what would you do differently if you had that time again? Yeah, it's an interesting question, isn't it, Jane? Because I always think that what I did, I've always learned from. And if I did it differently, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have learned that whatever lessons I learned from what I did. Mm -hmm. um, but look, I reckon one thing that really made a difference to me was mm -hmm. focusing on building up a subscription service as part of my business. And okay. uh, I decided this is almost about almost ten years ago now. I decided that um, instead of only doing work for a one-off fee each time, whether it was running a training program or doing some consulting for a client um, mm -hmm. or even selling a book. Instead of just doing it that way, I decided, okay, what I'm going to do is build up a membership so right. people will pay me a much smaller amount, so it's $50 a month for, for membership rather, rather than coming to a training program or buying individual webinars or um, buying consulting. They can pay for access to me and my resources through my membership site and I remember the time that it happened it was I really focused on that so uh, there was a year 2007 when I decided to really focus on membership and I decided okay anything I can do to help me get a new member I'll do so if it meant speaking to speaking free at a networking event because there are potential members there I'd do that if it was somebody saying okay look can you run a training by giving memberships to your members and uh, to the people right. who attended. So it was becoming very strategic around that. And that has really served me well. And it was something that really, it, it made a difference. And perhaps if I had done it earlier, uh, it would have made a bigger difference. But equally, I'm just I'm happy that I did it at the time I did. Yeah, right. And that's, a, that's really topical, I think, because I'm starting to see more authors running Facebook groups to capture membership um, type clients. But I guess in your case, it's, the access to all the resources, not necessarily running through a Facebook group, but um, extending the learning and the access to tools that I can use to extend my learning. Yeah, absolutely. And it could be it could be people running Facebook groups or LinkedIn groups as well, Jane. I, I think okay. there's there are a lot of people who are doing it that way because they what they want to do is build up volume. So yes. they get many, many, many thousands of members right. and then they can promote to those like, members and they've got a loyal following and yes. the other way of doing it which is one that I chose is to get a few hundred members uh -huh. uh, and that becomes the income stream in itself and I don't think it's one way is right or wrong I think it's just pick a lane and they, they can both work <laughs> yeah um, so would you have advice for anyone who would be considering you know similar type of thing where they've either got their own business and they perhaps considering you know I guess when I think about this I think about someone like Bernard Soul and I know um, Matt talks about Bernard being a bit like the you know the say a, like a rainmaker for KPMG you know he's got his own brand as Bernard Soul and then he's got um, 
KPMG, which sort of positions KPMG as well. Um, and so I guess that's been probably the journey we've been on. We've had our own businesses plus, you know, that's meant that our profile and then out speaking and um, mentoring has meant sometimes there are programs that we run through our other, our other business. Um, but if I think about people who are maybe within a business um, like that, that, so they could be in a consulting business or, or even um, operating under a different business name have, and they're thinking about, you know, why, why would I do a yourname.com type of approach? Um, like, would you have any advice if someone was, was considering doing that? Yeah, I think it's, and I agree with you, I agree with you, James, that people like Bernard Salt, they're obvious candidates for that. But even somebody who's, let's say you're working for a real estate franchise and uh -huh. you're a real estate professional in the territory that you work with, um, even then, why not get yes. your name com? I think it's yes. completely applicable in that situation. And I think yes. just the value of it is, just to, the, the value of it is that you get that name and you can hold it forever. Yes. And even if all you do is what I did at the start, which was just point it to your other business name, or if it's in your, if, like let's say you've got a real estate franchise, um, mm -hmm. you point it to that page on the on the on the website on the main website. Okay. Um, it's a nice, simple way for people to to find you, and it gives you the flexibility that sometime later, if you want to peel it off and create your own business around it, then it's easy to do. And that's what I did, um, and that's why I got I've got the domain names for my two nieces and my nephew, because <laughs> I know that sometime in the future they will want to have that personal brand for themselves. And even though they're only um, 5, 10 and 12 now, at yes. some time, uh, I, I want to be the person, uh, I want them to be the only person who has that, that domain name attached to their name because at yes. some point that's going to be really useful to them. Absolutely. And so I'd love to know what you're working on now. You're always at the forefront of the, uh, the innovation and always go, what, what's Gihan writing about <laughs> at the moment? So what are your plans that you're working on for the next 12 to 18 months? Okay, great. Thanks for asking, Jane. Thanks for giving me the chance to talk to different audiences about the future, the challenges they're facing, some of the stuff that's coming up in their industry. It's the sort of stuff that they are really busy and they don't have the time to investigate, so they appreciate having somebody else come and talk about, hey, here's what's happening in the world that might affect you in the next 12 to 18 months. And um, the second thing is I've just launched my next book, and I know you said in the, wow. in the introduction uh, you talked about the three and the other seven books I've launched, yes. so now there's now there's 11 rather than 10. 11? Yes. Wow. Okay. And uh, this one I love. Uh, this one's called There's an I in Team. And, you know, people always say there's no I in team. Well, I think mm -hmm. that's changed. And, you know, our conversation today is so relevant to that. So wow. there is an I in team now. And even if you're a, even if, like, if you're a leader of team members who are your employees and they work for an organization, there are still smart, talented, savvy individuals there who would love to um, help you achieve your goals if you help them achieve theirs. And, um, you know, we can talk about this for ages, Jane, so let's not. Um, <laughs> but it's absolutely true. So that there's an I team. And so that is something that uh, as I talk to people in organizations, what they're finding is that the, the, the people who, the leaders who actually do tap into the potential of their team members, they find yeah. it's pretty easy to do and it's very effective and they free up more time and uh, become more productive themselves. So that's the second thing. And the third one is this really interesting idea that I've got, Jane, which is called Business Book in a Box. All right. And it's, it's probably not for you and me because we are like we we like writing, we're good at writing, but there are a whole bunch of other people who are experts in what they do, yes. but they are not good writers and they're never going to be, and that's okay, that they shouldn't yes. be. They should do what they're, what they're really good at, but they've really got some important messages and ideas mm. and they'd love to get a book written, mm. so, but they don't want to be the ones writing the book. So what I, what I do is get the team of people that I work with to, to publish books. Um, oh. So I'll, I'll interview them. Uh, so let's say if it was you, Jane, I'll interview you um, talk about the content of your book and then you sit back and relax and 90 days later 200 books turn up on your doorstep so oh, that's wow. <laughs> that's the idea and uh, I'm really excited about that one it's that's a new exciting. project it, it really is it really is and I think there are people who will like that idea because it is still their ideas it's still their messages but in the same way as I don't like I'll outsource much of my other marketing and some of the other work that I do to to experts in that area um, mm -hmm. I want to I want to provide that outsourced 
a service to people who want to write and have a have a book published? Oh, I love that idea, Gian. I think that that's just fantastic because even even for me, I, I I'm not a fast writer at all. You know, people sort of say, "Oh, you must find it so easy. You just write all the time." But it's one of the toughest things. I'm more a speaker and a mentor, so mm. it's the thing I'm slowest at. And um, so if you can take any of the pain out of that, <laughs> I think because the book is is one of the, it, it really is the positioning tool to, um, uh, to le- uh, you know, leverage and, and let those know in your industry that you're serious about what you do. I, I, you, I mean, you've written 11 of them, so I don't know, I don't need to, um, uh, to tell you, but certainly, you know, it, the book changes everything, doesn't it? It does. It, it really yeah. does. It's, and, and it's for the, those people who, so it's not for everyone, it's for people who have the expertise and they know they've yes. got the expertise but, and they would love to get a book published. Yes. But, they, you know, it's frustrating. Like, like you, Jane, and you're like most people. But it's like yeah. me with producing really high-quality videos. I don't do video production and there's some brilliant people like my, my partner, Nikki's 16-year-old daughter. She's mm-hmm. fantastic with design and art and she's just got that visual eye and mm-hmm. I haven't. So I'd much rather outsource that sort of task and uh, you're going to have to keep in touch with us so that we can uh, find out about more because I think lots of people who will be listening are really keen to get their book together but not really sure what to do. So I'm going to put on the website the uh, link to Gian's uh, website. I'll have the recording on there as well, but I'll make sure I have the link um, to all these things so um, so that we can keep in touch and find out uh, and make sure we get access to them um, for you. So, so how can people find you, Gihan? What's the best way to get in touch? Well, there's only one answer after the conversation <laughs> with Aunt Jane, and that's GihanPereira.com. So it's G-I-H-A-N, Pereira, P-E-R-E-R-A.com. And that really is a hub for everything. So. All right. Well, thank you again for coming along today, Gihan. You are just an absolute wealth of information i could sit and listen to you for days um and um so my suggestion is is if you you want to definitely jump on guillampereira.com have a look at uh, the work that uh, he's doing particularly around you know if you're looking at getting started particularly around um the fast flat and free is a really great place to start have a look at webinar smarts and some of the other books we'll keep an eye out for the new book coming and um and certainly your uh, your book. What's a business book in a box? Yeah, so, yeah, that's right. Fantastic. Um, I would also probably you might want to have a look at Link uh, Gihan's uh, LinkedIn page, and even follow his posts on LinkedIn. Um, so I often I've often hyperlinked or some articles I've written, and I've hyperlinked to an article that Gihan's written. Um, so perhaps just keep an eye on those if you're on LinkedIn. Uh, Gihan also you have Facebook as well. Um, if you want to, but definitely sign up for his newsletter because it's at the leading edge of I go, what's happening. I'll just follow Gian, <laughs> whatever Gian says. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much, Jane. And LinkedIn is one of the, the probably the main business air uh, social network that I use. So definitely follow me there. Follow you there. All right, fantastic. Thank you again, Gian, and uh, we look forward to keeping in touch.